it's a really complex issue dealing with with the county first and foremost that got involved with a husband and wife duo. She is a Keller Williams real estate agent um, who also represents herself as a broker in an LLC. Um, what happened was they alleged that my house was sold at a tax upset sale back in December 2019. Come to find out, you know, as years went on, this was concealed from me until 2021. And under tax sale law, you have like one year. Come to find out there was never a lien on my property. The taxes were paid. They got a fraudulent mortgage three days before this alleged tax sale for the exact amount of the bid. So unless he's got a crystal ball somewhere, you don't know what you're going to bid and you're, that you're going to win a bid on a property. My home is paid in full um, with a value of close to $700,000. So, and I did that because my home is modified for my son in a wheelchair. He was 27 and lives with me for his safe care. So um, once I, when I, when I bought the house, I did so to protect his lifetime of care um, for the equity. So long story short, they came to me in 2021 after this alleged sale and said, we need a blacklisting. Um, we own your home. And I said, you know, like, I don't know anything about this. She created a, black, a listing agreement in her, in her husband's LLC for $150,000 under, under market in order to sell to another one of his LLCs, then put it on the market at, at you know, market value. So what happens essentially is they, they have tax liens, they have convictions, they have all of these, these convictions for quality of life, for not getting a rental license. Then she comes as the Keller Williams agent demanding a black listing agreement from me when I refused they took me to quiet title and they're trying to do an eviction now. Um, needless to say, I'm fighting it because there was never a lien on the property. They got a fraudulent mortgage three days before an alleged sale and six months before you even had my deed. Um, the deed was transferred. There was never any funds paid towards taxes. Then they transferred my tax bills to a fake address. Um, so I had no control over where those tax bills were going created the, the delinquency on my taxes for close to $100,000. Put it on, exposed it to upset five additional times. So it it's ridiculous that this has even happened because how do you allow somebody to create a delinquency of $100,000 and come in and demand a blank listing agreement from me? And then she works for Keller Williams and lists herself on this agreement as a dual agent. So you're a dual agent on this listing agreement that you created for your husband's LLC to then sell to another LLC, again, list yourself as a dual agent and sell again. So they're making a commission there for close to 9% on both sales, transferring it and then selling it on the market. Does that make sense? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I know it's, 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 uh, it's confusing at, at best. Um, I've spent three years and and many days and nights going through the paperwork and finding all of these issues and finding out that I'm not the only one in the county, that there's other homes that has been illegally transferred to these LLCs from an alleged tax sale that, that these LLCs can't be at a tax sale because of their convictions and their leads. It's illegal. They're, they're banned. So they send in fake bidders if there is a sale and they get the deeds and they turn around and then force people out of their homes is basically essentially what they're doing. It's it's basically, it's it's what's going on in, I mean, I'm in Pennsylvania, so it's basically what's going on a lot. It happened in the city a lot and now it's unfortunately moved out to the suburbs. Um, and what's happened is that they're, they're doing, they're finding their way through the, these intricacies of of taxes and 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 tax sales, and then they're getting these properties and deeds illegally by basically finding the loopholes. And then what happens is, if it was a legal sale, if it was a tax sale, then all of those documents would be in place. There'd be you know cashiers' checks. There'd be 
transfers. There'd be, you know, all kinds of documentation to show that you legitimately legally bought this house. You did not. And I demanded documentation for years. They could not provide it. So then, you know, if, if you legally bought my home at a tax sale, why would you need me to provide you with a blank listing agreement for you to sell my home? None of it made any sense. So the more that I fought, the more that I kicked, they filed what's called a quiet title action. A quiet title action requires an ejectment complaint first. An ejectment complaint requires that person to prove beyond a doubt that they own this house. And like I said, I own 100% equity. They're saying that, that they sold my house for you know an alleged tax bill of $40,000, which there was never a lead on my property. So how none of it made any sense. And the more that I fought them, the more that I said, no, I'm not providing you with a blacklisty agreement. She was here and walked through my house. And you create a blacklisty agreement for us beyond my permission without even asking me. And then start texting my 22-year-old son at the time, telling him to have me sign it. Uh, no, <laughs> like none of it. And, and you know, with with her being a real estate agent and then listing herself as a dual agent, it's fraudulent. You know, all all of it, every step of the way was fraudulent. And I guess at this point, my my purpose for reaching out to you was to kind of like pull the facts together and truly get it out there. And this, what happened was when they filed the quiet title action, they are trying to evict me with my son in a wheelchair in the dead of winter. Within a home that I own 100% equity that's modified for his safe care. He's nonverbal. He's in a wheelchair with cerebral palsy. So, you know, like how, how do you, in, in, in any sense of the imagination, think that you own title in my home? When they don't, they've proved none of it. So, you know, at this point, it's like, it just it blows my mind that that this that this could even happen when they've created a tax debt on my home now for over a hundred thousand dollars. You know, so it, it's part of the scheme. It's part of the 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 the. It, it's a real estate scheme, and it's it's so intricate and so convoluted that it's ridiculous, and it's throwing people out of their homes. And here she is acting as a broker. And working for Keller Williams, creating these black listing agreements outside of the MLS. So if it's not in the MLS, you don't have other real estate agents looking at it. You're not getting that that market value that you're supposed to get. It's she's keeping it there so that nobody else can see it, so that no other realtors can see it, so that she has his other LLC come in with full ask under 150, and then. When nobody else sees it, she transfers it to another LLC. Then it goes onto the market with the MLS. But you're, you're, it's outside of the MLS, which gives us all, you know, our fair market values on our house. So, yeah, you know, it, it, it's disgusting, you know, in in my opinion, because you're not even considering the rights of my family or the rights of my son to throw to to, to attempt to throw us out of the streets. In the dead of winter, when I own 100% equity, it's supposed to protect him. The best solution is for the judge to, you know, drop the order at this point. Um, the, there's, there has to be a stay of the eviction. There, there's no option there. They cannot throw my son out in the streets in a wheelchair, in a power wheelchair, out of his accessible environment. You know, this home is modified for his needs. So that, that's got to stop. The eviction has to stop. Um, I've taken it into the federal court's hands, um, and at this point, it's up to them to overturn everything. So we're fighting. You know, that's that's the best option. And honestly, at the end of the day, you know, I want my house back. I want to live in peace. Um, but I I think that that these people need to be convicted. You know, I really do because this this is a ring of, of real estate schemes that are going on. And it just needs to be brought to light because, you know, they, they count on people thinking that they had these tax liens on their home and they were delinquent with their taxes. And they portray you in that light. 
they, I mean, you just didn't pay your taxes and you're deadbeat and you know, you're just bitter because your house was sold. Guess what? Mm -mm. No, because I had the receipts. I, I had the documents. I have been collecting these documents since day one. When they showed up at my door trying to get me to sign this mortgage, then that was, you know, that was in June. By August 30th, the sheriff shows up at my door with a tax sale notice for $75,000, but you paid my taxes, right? So no, you know, I went to the tax office and I said, what is this? You are saying that, that you sold it, that he paid these liens that don't exist, but what is this? So the sale coordinator runs behind his little partition. The guy comes out, he's like, in litigation. But as he was back there, the woman to his left turns to me and says, I know who they are, husband and wife. And it's, yeah, yeah, nodded. She's a realtor. And I said, I nodded in agreement again. And she looks at me and goes, keep everything dear. I was like, okay, <laughs> I certainly will do that. And I've done that, you know, and it, it's a matter of, the devil's in the details, you know, they've, they've put in fraudulent documents, they've altered documents, there's time deed stamps that have been changed. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. Mm -hmm.